Good morning all. This is an electrical socket, 16 amp, which I'm thinking about putting on the outside wall of my house for occasional uh, electric car charging using a granny charger. Now I'm currently looking into electrical regulations to see whether this kind of socket is okay uh, in a domestic setting. Um, normally you are required to have a socket that is shuttered. Now of course this, if I undo that, oh it is undone, uh, this can't be shuttered because it's a commando or C form uh, type 16 amp socket. You don't have shuttered versions of this. Um, but this one, let me just get a little piece of pipe. Uh, yeah, this piece of pipe I found, there's a little notch in there. That sits nicely under that notch and behind there and holds uh, the lid up so that I can play with this thing. Um, this one is what's called interlocked. So this switch is off, so these are not live connections and the switch won't turn. And in fact, there's a little message here that says switch will only operate when plug is inserted. So this is an interlocked socket. You can't switch it on unless there's a plug in there. And when it is switched on, you can't pull the plug out unless you switch it back off again. So is that the equivalent of a shuttered socket? Okay, let's defeat the interlock mechanism. So the little... Uh, peg that sits in that uh, recess, pushes down on a little spring-loaded plunger and that lets you switch the switch on. So now if this were powered up there would be live connections on these two. And then um, a little slide comes across. I'll see if I can get a shot of that actually. So if you look down in this little um, cutout section and I turn the switch off you can see the slide draws back, turn the switch back on, which I'm able to do because the locking mechanism doesn't engage until you come right back. That's the locking mechanism, so now I can't switch the switch back on again. But yes, a little blade slides across here and actually holds the plug in, so when the switch is on you can't pull the plug back out. Now this IP67 rating uh, here, that would need to apply to this, now this looks like it's uh, very much IP67 rated. You've got a flat uh, piece here with a gasket in there and you've got these slightly wedge shaped um, flanges I suppose they are so that when you turn this it tightens up and that feels very much IP67 rated. IP67 is uh, immersion in water to a depth of one meter for up to 30 minutes I believe. Um, now the other thing is you've got four screws holding this uh, socket assembly onto the main body here. In there there's a sort of black coloured foam gasket. Not entirely sure whether I feel that that's IP67 rated. Um, this switch I think has some sort of flat uh, washer in there because when you remove all the gubbins behind this, this is still quite stiff to move. Um, the gasket around the edge here, I'm a bit suspect on, but we'll have a look at those bits as I strip this thing down. So that's what I plan to do in this video, just simply take it apart and take a look at what's inside and see how it works. So let's undo these screws. Um, they're not anything security minded, they're just standard posi drive screws. It would have been, I think, better if they'd been at least some sort of tamper proof but then I mean we've all got a set of security screwdriver bits haven't we so nothing is actually tamper proof. Right let's take the front plate off this box and that's what's inside. There's a socket here um, fed through two wires from this switch. Uh, quite a chunky looking switch actually. Now I can't turn the switch because I haven't defeated the interlock We'll have a look at how that interlock uh, works. But one concern I had was this very tiny plastic ridge which is meant to sit on this uh, seal but you can see in places that it doesn't quite work. Yeah just along here for example you can just about see the indentation of this 
very narrow plastic ridge along that part but then for some reason the gasket kind of is deformed a bit here and I think that could be a position where moisture could get into this thing. If this um, inner wall here were just a bit wider it would sit on more of this uh, well it's like rubber but I think it's not rubber was it neoprene or something like that and I think then you'd get a better seal but uh, anyway so I'll remove these two uh, wires there's a brown and a blue for line and neutral take those out that one's not quite coming out is it okay so those uh, have ferrules on them and then I'll also remove them from the switch uh, this side now interestingly as this thing was supplied um, the brown wire has a ferrule each end but the blue wire doesn't quite I mean it has the crimped on ferrule part but it doesn't have the um, the blue plastic uh, sleeve there I don't quite know why I've got a funny feeling actually that someone's played with this and uh, taken it back to tool station and then I've bought it and it's kind of second hand so let's take a look at this socket it's very simple um, there are just two screws holding this back plate onto it so we'll undo those take those screws out and the back plate comes away and then the three uh, socket pieces and you can see that they're just split at the end to provide a, a grip that's the earth and then we've got uh, neutral and line and then this if I undo the lid is uh, just a plastic plastic chassis that holds all of the parts um, the spring-loaded plunger you can't quite see yet so what I'll do is I'll take this inner back plate off and then we can have a look at the mechanism that links mechanically the switch with the socket so I need to undo these four screws holding this inner back plate onto the uh, front plate okay that's off so now this should lift out and there it is and it has the switch um, mounted on there with one screw interestingly but then these pegs um, actually come in and round so I've got a feeling that's intentional to allow a small amount of movement on there but there's a square uh, shaft on the switch and there's a square hole in this so this is the sliding mechanism that does the interlock thing and you can see that when you turn the switch on this uh, arm moves here now there is a bit of friction there so that might be a washer under there which provides the IP67 rating let's just put that on there and there's the little cutout and you can see the slide runs across it um, when this switch is actuated and that's what locks the plug in I'll just get a plug so here's a 16 amp C form or commando plug and you can see that the little keyway piece there is a certain length long but no more and so that slide is designed to sit behind um, this key piece here so that the plug can't be withdrawn it might actually be able to demonstrate that um, yes I'll have to undo that hold it open put the plug in I'll do that now right there's the plug going in and out it's a bit wobbly because it's got no connections to connect into but you can see that as I turn this switch uh, okay that wasn't quite in position but that blade locks itself underneath the blue plastic key that runs down the keyway and that prevents you from it's all falling apart but that prevents you from withdrawing the plug so if I use this spanner I can activate this switch like so and it seems to have a very positive function there's a little peg there that you can see moves in when the switch is I think on 
and out when it's off. So I'll just uh, take that screw out and get the switch out. Yes, there's obviously a position for a second screw, but they probably decided actually it's better without it. Um, because of these uh, pegs here sit over there so that this thing can't actually fall out. So that's the switch. Let's look at the ratings on the end. Um, well, there are masses of ratings on here. In various places it says 32 amps, uh, 30 amps, we've got 30 amps, 690 volts. Um, this AC22A is 20 amps, 690 volts. Three phase is 16 amps, 690 volts. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff on there, but I imagine it's uh, good for single phase, 16 amps to 40 volts. Um, only two of the four channels are used. So there's a connection there, but not there. And there's a connection out there, but not there. So it's not completely entirely used, but it looks like a pretty chunky switch to me. And here's the plunger that is pushed in against uh, the spring which is sitting in there. So that initially unlocks the slide. So then the slide can slide along there. If I'll get the slide, it's here. Uh, which way around is this? It's that way around. So that stops the slide coming across. And then when the plug is inserted, the slide can come across. And then this blade here locks the plug in place so that you can't take it back out. And then when you uh, turn the switch back to the off position, that all comes out and the plunger springs out and you can remove the plug, which means that um, as long as this mechanism isn't defeated, you'll never see live pins on the exposed socket. So it looks to me like this um, rubber gasket washer thing around here is actually molded in place because there's all these dots here. Um, where the rubber moulding has come through and so you can't actually remove it because it's held in place. But round the edge here there are all these blemishes where the rubber has sort of is not sitting flat. There's one there. It's not sitting flat to the plastic. So this is really my main concern with the IP67 rating for the entire box. And in any case, I think it would make sense to put this switch, uh, switched socket, this interlocked socket, inside a meter box. So the sort of box that you'd normally get an electricity meter inside. I'm planning to put this inside that box and then that has a door which shuts and you've got that triangular little keyway so that you can lock it. Um, just to provide additional weatherproofing for this. And also a little bit of extra deterrent against tampering, that sort of thing. There are a couple of holes on top here and there's um, a sort of run through there. And it looks like it's designed so that you could, I don't know, cable tie this or even padlock it with a small padlock into either the off position or the on position. Not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but that facility uh, has been provided. I was just looking at getting this off. There are a couple of clips here. I might be able to coax those in and we can see what the um, waterproofing is behind that switch. But there's a fair bit of friction on there. I have taken this arrow piece out. It actually works itself out after a while. It doesn't seem to be clipped in very well and there's no screw in there or anything. Um, so if I undo those clips, I might be able to get that off. I'll have a play with that. Yeah, no, I think this has been designed to be a very tight friction fit as this uh, switch circular piece is being pushed in doesn't feel like it wants to come out really and I'm only going to uh, damage it if I take that out and I actually do want to use this it was 30 pounds uh, so it wasn't hugely cheap it wasn't hugely expensive but uh, a, a fair bit of money. So the only bit I haven't shown is um, where this black foamy it's just foamy plastic washer is squished between uh, the socket assembly and this front plate. Now I did take that off previously because all the foam was sort of sticking out at the top here and I repositioned it but nothing fitted very well. These holes didn't really line up with the um, positions behind and I was 
contemplating cutting back these two positioning pegs a little bit to make this all fit better. But I guess those two pegs are to hold this socket down such that the um, plunger mechanism is uh, reliably engages as you put the uh, plug in. There's a slight angle on there actually, it's an angle slightly down. But um, so I don't think I'm going to undo those again because the uh, foamy washer had a lot of sort of compressions and indents in it and it was all a bit of a mess. I'm not sure how many times it's going to tolerate that being taken off. In any case, if that's not a particularly good seal round there, uh, the fact that I'm putting this in a separate cabinet should uh, help with weatherproofing. So that is a C form or a Commando, or strictly speaking, it's an IEC 60309 uh, interlocked socket, which has the same kind of functionality as a shuttered socket, um, but for C form, where of course shuttered sockets don't exist. So as an alternative, you can get these interlocked sockets. That's what's inside. That's how it works. Those are my thoughts on its IP67 rating. So cheerio.